Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series. This is the episode number 6 where we are covering about package.json and package-log.json. These are two important files in our project repo and it's important that you understand all of this um, in detail because it is usually asked in your interviews. Also, it is impo important as a developer, as a QA, we need to understand how the setting needs to be done. We'll learn all about that today. So stay with me on this tutorial. If you have any doubts, if you need any technical help, just drop them in the comment section below. I will be happy to help you for free. My name is Sridhar. I have close to 10 plus years of experience as a full stack developer on front end technologies as well as back end technologies. I am here to share my knowledge with you and also to learn from you all. All right, uh, so we are covering this entire series where we are doing a building a project called one conversion and which will be used to convert different types of parameters. We will learn all about that during the course of these tutorials. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will be happy to help you. Also, just a recap. So in this series so far, we have covered five episodes where we have learned different things right from starting from Angular introduction to upgrading to Angular 9 to installing Angular CLI, running our first app. We have also learned to install Bootstrap framework in our application. We have learned about the folder structure and booting process in the last episode. In this episode, we are going to learn and understand about package.json and package-log.json. Let's get started. So like I said, uh, it's in, these are two important files which talk about the dependencies and what modules are required and what versioning. So pay attention to this because these are very, very important from configuration point of view. Let's get started with our application. All right, so I have my application here, one conversion, we see that. I'm going to open a terminal. Uh, nothing fancy here. Uh, we haven't started really developing the components, the services, modules, which we are going to start from next episode. This episode, in the last episode, if you see, we have taken some notes in understanding the default uh, folder structure, the booting process. We understood, we explained each and everything in detail about each folder, each of its components and everything. So if you have missed episode number five, I, I suggest you please go ahead and check that tutorial. Today's tutorial we are focusing, we mentioned here that we will learn about package.json and package-log.json. So we are going to learn that here in package.json and package-log.json. All right, so let's get started. So when you create a new project directory, you would see that there is a there are two important files. One is package.json, one is package-log.json. Let's first see the package.json. When you click on it, the first thing you see is the name of your project. And this is the one that you can give while generating uh, the Angular CLI project. So this is the same project name that you would have given while generating the project. You can give any name you want here, doesn't matter. Again, when you are working on a large applications, you would see that you have to maintain the versioning of it, the releases of it. So you for with each release, you can use something like this, one, two, dep depends upon which version you're working on basically. Now coming to scripts. So these are the default scripts that you are provided, right? So we will use ng to start the ng command. To start, we will use ng serve. To build, we'll use ng build. To test, we'll write ng test. To lint, we'll write ng lint. And e2e for ng e2e. So these are your npm commands, right? So these are your npm commands that we will run. So if you want to see an example of it, you can just say uh, npm run start. So let's quickly show you that. So 
when you want to run these commands, you will write npm run start. Oh, sorry, you have to be inside the uh, package. So I'm going into one version npm run start. So you see, now I have developed the, I have run the command npm run start and internally it is running ng serve because that's the command that we have configured, right? So these are the commands that we have to give and it will start running. These are very important from build pipeline perspective. So you will have your script commands. You will have scripts commands which are very useful in your build pipelines where you configure your build pipelines. So that's very, very important um, and very, very critical. You can update them also. Uh, you can also say if you want, let's say now it has compiled successfully. Let's cancel this. Now let's say I want to customize and add a new command. We can do that. Let's say you want to start something with developer, right? So you can say ng developer. If you, you can, again, you can have customize the scripts and you can say with mock data and you can pass parameters and customize what it should do or you can say etc. So this is where basically you will customize the script. So remember, so the first thing, whenever you want to understand any project of Angular, uh, because when you join new projects, you may not work on from scratch. So you will need to work uh, on an existing uh, particular project. And to understand, first always go to package.json to understand any existing Angular application always refer first to package.json to see the scripts right so this is the first thing you should check if you are trying to understand any existing application then you have build test lint e2e then comes this is a private yes it is a private repo then comes the important part, which is dependencies. So dependencies is nothing but this tells what all are the required modules, libraries, packages to run your application. If you see, these are all the required de dev de dependencies without which this application will not work. And then you will see something called dev dependencies. Now, these are all the required things which these dependencies will make use of. Right. So dev dependencies means you'll see a list of lot of things, but main are dependencies. Whenever you are in development environment, you will have to work with dev dependencies. Now, how do you add modules and packages? Let me show you an example. So I'm going to install MySQL. So we will say npm install MySQL. What it will do is it will install the MySQL in our application package and it will update the package.json file. Let's see that in action. So I've run the command npm install MySQL and now it is installing MySQL in our repo. All right, so let's give it a minute to build. In the meanwhile, if you're liking this video, if you're liking this Angular 9 series, please give a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, so we see that the package has been added. So now let's go and refresh this screen. Let's go and refresh this screen. I'll say don't save and then again, let's open it. And now you see something got added in our repo. You see this line number 23 and you can see the green bar, which means it got modified, got added. So MySQL is now added in dependencies. So whenever we add any package, any library, it gets added into our package.json. So to see a list of details where it got added, we will have to add them. We can even manually add them in package.json and then run npm install. But the quickest way is to run through command prompt and see that dependency added in our package.json. So now we added MySQL and it has 
installed it, it has got it updated in our package.json. Now, this is how uh, any, uh, all of it, uh, all the different modules that you want in your application, you will add them in package.json file. Now let's talk a little bit about the package-lock.json. So if you see here, again, this has its name, it has the version name, and it is log file version one. And then we have requires true, and then the dependencies. Now you will see something unique here, which is, this is too big. This is too big, right? because it has expanded everything inside the package.lock. Whereas you will see that in your package.json, there's only limited. So package.lock are everything that is required for your production build. So whenever you see package-lock.json, these are everything that you need to run in your production mode, right? And it's it says where to fetch the file from, and everything. So these are all the, uh, this is a production, uh, I would say ready file, which without which your application will not work. You will not see a lot of things, but this will also have all the interdependencies that requires Angular, like for this example, right? If you see this Angular CLI requires a lot of things here. If you see minimalist FS extra dependency, and lot of things. So which means it will list down all the dependencies that this particular package you have listed. Now this is listed in your package.json. If you see, you will have all of these which are required, you see. And now this has internal dependencies which are resolved in package.log. So these are all the things that are required for compiler-cli which means your package.log will maintain a, all the dependencies which are which you have listed in package.json that will also give you a minimalistic build so that your application is stable so this is very very important uh, for to understand from your application perspective because whenever you install anything it will have its own dev dependencies it will have some more dependencies internally this is where it gets resolved. And if you want to see and upgrade your versions of your packages, you can do it here. Now let's understand that little bit more. If you see clearly here, it says Angular 9.1.6, right? What does this mean? This means that it is going to install Angular 9's major version. So this is means the first number means it's a major version. One means it's a minor version. And then six means it's a patch. So that is what we have to understand. It always have three values, the major version, the minor and the patch. So whenever you want something to specify, you can also specify something like 8.0.0. This is fine. This is also fine provided you now update everything to eight, whichever has dependencies, right? So make sure you're carefully selecting your values because without which, if there is no proper dependency code, it will not work, right? Similarly, MySQL 2.18.1, here the major version is two and minor version is 18 and the patch number is one, right? So these are the, this is how um, the package.json and package.log.json works. Uh, I hope you are clear with the entire now file folder directory structure uh, with the details that we covered in last episode, which is file folder and boot process. That's your main.ts. We also covered package.json and package.log.json. So just to make final notes, it will have all dependencies and uh, dev dependencies, package lock dot JSON will resolve 
all the required sub modules right so this is how um, everything will be done uh, you can run the scripts you can do the dependencies resolve and you can do the sub dependencies as well i hope you are clear with this if you have any doubts uh, if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section i will be happy to help you for free that being said now let's look at all right so that brings us to the end of this episode in the next episode i am going to start covering the important concepts like modules i am going to start covering components everything all in detail so please don't miss out on those and the best way to not to miss is to first subscribing to the channel also liking these videos if you are enjoying them because i am purely enjoying uh, teaching this series i hope you are enjoying it as well thank you so much see you on the next episode which is modules in angular